Hi, I'm Paul Brody. Shop situation here again. Myself and Mitch. Mitch is the cameraman. He doesn't want to be in front of the camera. He doesn't want to fabricate, so that's fine. Uh, we have had some comments. People are saying about the Tiger Cub. When are you going to start it? Well, this is my list. I still have a few things to do, so please be patient. In the comments also, there, there was a few comments on the banjo bolt. People think that this is too long going inside, so that's not gonna take long to check. Let's have a look and see what's going on. And if it's too long, we'll just make it shorter right away. And then we got, we're gonna look at a couple other things too. Basically what we're doing today, we're gonna mount the brake light switch this goes on the back of the cub and there also needs to be a return spring for the back brake. And I was looking at this last night. I don't have a drawing. I don't even have a sketch because I don't know what that piece looks like. It's, uh, it's going to have a bend in it, but that's about all I can tell you. So, okay. So this goes down. This is to the bottom. I'll lock that. I thought we might have to shorten it, but no. It's not going to impede the oil flow at all, so don't have to do anything there. We'll just put it back on. The next thing we're going to talk about is, there was a few comments also about that the O-ring is showing here on the blanking plug. Maybe we'll do something. I'll show you what I did this morning. I had a special tool and I had it for over 40 years and do you think I can find it? No. So I made a tool this morning. This is high speed steel. It's a tool bit. It was just on the end it was rectangular. Very handy having this on there still. I think we're going to go to the lathe and I think I can get in there and I can machine a recess so the o-ring sits up in there. It's a good thing I left this quite lot, quite high. So let's go over to the lathe. That can't take very long, can it? No. There we are. The O-ring is, uh, yeah, it's, it's starting to sit down in that groove now. So let's put a little bit of pressure on it and so there, that's about the same thickness as a fiber washer. So I'm saying that's as good as it gets. Here's the brake light switch and this is the return spring. It's I don't know what stock looks like here. I, I don't have any photos or anything. I want this piece to go. This piece is in the way. That's what used to hold on the, on the passenger peg. And on the other side, I cut it off, but it didn't have a side stand mount. So this one is gonna get cut probably right about where my finger is. I want this to be underneath like that. So this has to get mounted onto a plate something like that. There'll be a couple screws. I've got some screws here. And then I want a slot here so I can move this uh, a back and forth somewhat, maybe three quarters of an inch. So that's going to get mounted something like that. So this comes off and there has to be a mount that goes in behind. That's the part that I don't know about. That's what I have to figure out now. There's going to be Maybe it's a piece of, of tubing which is bent, but then I'm not sure how the join looks here. So we'll just do one step at a time. It's called, it's called build as you go. You don't know the next step really, but you figure it out as you go. So I need a spring as well. So the spring will probably mount in behind this. This is gone. And the spring, it could get it could be shorter. I can shorten this. 
it's it's got some some pull to it but this is a brake pedal this spring inside on the brake shoes is not strong enough really it seems to be working now but everything's clean and lubed i want a stronger spring as well so i think the spring is going to attach onto the plate that's what i think first step is to take off this there's a couple bolts and then we're going to hack hack sword after we take off the paint here this will obviously have to get repainted here's a special tool that i made i've had this for years now just welding rod and i made the end round and you put a piece of metal in there and that's really good when you want to pull off a spring like this. So, let's see. There we go. That's a good little tool. I'm going to take off the paint because that's going to get hacksawed. So, there goes some, a nice coat of paint. We need to make something to hold this now. So let's design something here. That's going to be to line up this. That's the actuator, actuator pin, I suppose you'd call it. So we need to drill holes there. I'll mark the outside. And I think that I want to put a slot in there somehow. So I might have to move this back and forth. So I don't want the Allen screw to go in behind here. We'll put the Allen screw down here a little bit. Like that. That's going to be the slot. I'm making this up as I go. So we're going to have a slot from... We can make it long. doesn't matter. Well, let's make it from here to here so the first thing we'll do is to go to the i have to hold this in the vise and this is an odd shape so what we're going to do is to use the bandsaw and cut this off at two and a half inches then we got something we can hold because these will be parallel now okay we'll go to the bandsaw Anchor lube works on aluminum tapping. I'm using my eyeball here. We need perpendicular both ways. A spiral point tap means I can just go straight in. Don't have to do the back and forth. Okay, after this we're going to make a shape. Mitch doesn't think it's the final shape. He thinks I'll be making another one next week, but we'll see. I got my Frame Building 101 t-shirt on when I used to teach Frame Building 101. After the students completed the course, they all got a shirt. I think I did 67 courses in nine and a half years. The easiest shape to make this in is a triangle. We'll just do it like that. That'll be fine. 
no drawing just make it that's that's what we're doing right here okay one side of the triangle if this is a good shape it'll get anodized black it'll it'll hide down by the swing arm you won't I'm not going to make it shiny so it stands out. It'll just be black, like a lot on the back. So there, there's our shape. We've got the slot, so we can move this back and forth, and that holds the the brake light switch. I could have used the Japanese one, I guess, but I wanted something kind of original here. So. got a, a dreadnought file it's, can use for wood as well but it works well on aluminum okay so now we have to figure out how to hold that so let's go over to the bike again I'll blow this off We'll mount the switch and try and figure it out because right now, a bit of a question mark. Oh yeah, that'll, that'll look okay like that. Okay, so that's more or less what I want, like that. And now we have to put something from here to in behind here on the slot. So I guess the first thing is to machine something up. I was going to use something three quarters of an inch. This is this radius here is about three quarters, a little bit bigger. So let's go over to the lathe and we're going to cut some some cold roll, three quarter inch, and we'll we'll put a thread in there, and and then we'll have one part of the puzzle. We'll have this piece here. And then we'll figure out how this piece is mounted onto here. Okay, I've threaded the, the hole. I'm going to drill through because we only need that much thread to hold it. So I'm going to save a little weight on the old cub. Here's what we have. I found a large washer. There's the piece that just got made on the lathe. Uh, it's about three quarters of an inch long. So if I get a half inch tube, I've got room for a little, a little TIG weld on both sides. So this should fit something like that. I like the looks of it so far. It, it doesn't look out of place there. Bolts and screws and stuff. So. I'm going to go in the back now and I'm going to look around, see if I got any half inch tubing that can, that has a little bit of a bend in it. And once I find that, I have to come up with some kind of a cap or a shape here. I don't know. Anyway, one step at a time, I'll go look for a piece of tubing. In the back room, I've got a bunch of stuff. I was designing luggage racks for a touring bike at one point. My bike and gosh, it's all tangled up here. That's how that came about. And so I did these bends. They're not great. And then I, I had them done out of out of chrome molly. So so there's a piece of the half inch tubing. I think it's 035 4130. So 
and I've got some shorter pieces too. So this one here, that one's okay. In between these, we'll find something. We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, can, can you see that that is that? More or less. You know, put this into something like that. So coming up here is going to be that half inch, this half inch. So if I was to machine a piece that had a taper on it, like that, and then if that got notched out and that fitted that half, that would, that would fit this piece here. That's not straight across, that's at an angle because this is coming through and then this goes back like that and then it hooks up onto the plate. Maybe something like that because you need some sort of a transition from inch down to half inch. You can't just go, if you went like, like this, That's no, that's, that's not, you need a tapered section in there. It has to have some flow, some kind of flow. Well, just go in there a little bit. So if that goes like that, I have to miter this at an angle to match that too, more or less. Like that. Okay, let's try 25. Well, I'm just going to hold it. We're going to hold this in the mill and miter at an angle. Well, that looks okay. And then this just gets sealed off here, like a little button on the end. Okay, it went. Obviously, this is a work in progress. We'll continue next episode. Uh, can only do so much in one episode. Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us coffees, that fuels our channel. If you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. It's been great having you in the shop here. Thank you. See you next time. Stay safe.